Hello again. Today's question is quite an interesting one. It's which is better, books or the internet? Well, it's a very good question, particularly of course when there are books transcribed on the internet and uh, these days we often buy books on the internet of course. Perhaps the most obvious answer to that question from me is just by pointing behind me here. So I love books. Um, it feels when I come across a book and it has something that I'm really interested in, it feels like I'm tapping into that behaviour of foraging that our ancestors would once have done and that, that I still experience when I'm out in the landscape and I see fruit. It's like, yes, there's some fruit, I want to store that away. So for me, books, they're very much a, a store of ideas and information. Um, sometimes an entire person's lifetime can be wrapped up and concisely put together in a book and I can take on board the essence of what that person has learnt and sharing in a fairly short period of time and put that together with a whole bunch of other bits of information that I've got from other people. And of course what that allows us to do as human beings is to collect um, and focus if you like the experiences of different people and put them together into other people's ideas and recollect reconnect them and make decisions and come up with new ideas on that basis. And so for me, uh, this books are a treasure. You know, and even looking back a few hundred years, people have only recently had such access to this kind of information on this level. You know, in the past, if you had this many books, you would be incredibly wealthy and quite a lot of them probably have been written by hand by a person. And there might only be two or three copies of those books. So it seems amazing to me that technology has brought us this. And of course, it wasn't that the past in the past that people didn't know important things, of course, because um, we needed to know how to survive in our environment. And that's one thing that our ancestors had that most of us don't these days is the knowledge of how to meet their needs in the places that they lived. And we may have sofas and hi-fis and phones and things these days, but most of us don't know what we can eat in our landscape or where we would get food if we really needed to, if the shops didn't provide it for us. And so for me, books, if you like, are a, an opportunity to gather that important knowledge and other incredible things that people are love, learning and discovering and putting them together in a way that makes it possible to share it with other people. And for me, while, um, while I'm learning all these important things that most of which I didn't learn at school, then it's an opportunity for me to kind of keep them safe in the meantime, knowing that if I need to know about X, Y, or Z, then I can just go to the book, take it off the shelf, and then start to take that on board and learn it for myself. So the internet, of course, is a bigger repository of information. You know, I've only got so much information in these books, although I would say that probably, even if I spent the rest of my life reading all of the books that I have now, that I might not even get to the end of those or at least fully take on board what they were teaching me. So to a degree, it's a little bit like music now. You know, when I grew up, we had records and then there were CDs and so on, but there was a limit to what you had and you would play the same thing quite regularly. Whereas these days, there seems to be so much access to so many things that it's difficult to find what you want. Um, and it's very easy to get lost down tracks that kind of take you into interesting places. But then you think, well, what did I do with my day? So the internet is amazing. It also is very much dependent on a system that's being created by techno-industrial skills that we've developed and the resources that they require. And that whilst we might have phones or laptops or tablets to receive the internet, we're not in control of the system that delivers the information. So. Uh, the World Wide Web may be a distributed system that allows us to connect with lots of other people, but we rely on those connections in order to make that. And of course, if something happens to our internet router or something goes wrong with the wire or even beyond that, then I don't have access to the internet anymore. So I, whereas I can always pick a book off the shelf, sit down to read it, I don't even need an electric light. I can just go outside when the sun is up. And I can read that. I don't need any power anymore to do that. So for me, books feel much more secure. But the most secure place to have knowledge, of course, is in the body. 
to learn things, to physically put those skills into practice, to experience doing those things, to embody them, and to know other people that also have other skills that are complementary. And permaculture has not ever been about each of us being self-sufficient, even though there can be very useful skills described in books about self-sufficiency. But it's been about how do we come together again as communities with skills that are mutually beneficial and work together to create permaculture landscapes where we live. So thumbs up to books, enjoy the internet. We may not always have it, but while we have it, it's a really great resource, but also don't get lost in it. Remember that knowledge is best used, being implemented in the experiential learning of doing. Um, I learned most of my knowledge about plants not just from the books, because they taught me about different interesting plants to, to go and grow and so on, but from the act of growing them, seeing what they did, how they behave, what kind of conditions they liked, and so on and so forth. So enjoy books and the internet, uh, but also go out there and start learning it for yourself.